Okay, so good morning, everyone. Um, I, so the talk is going to be about the Zebra project. So that's a new project we've been working on with Nick, uh, Nick Lerman and Josh Quick. And uh, it concerns, it's about the real-time sequencing of Zika virus in Brazil. So just a, just a, a small or a short overview on the Zika virus. Um, it's not really, we know that it was first isolated in 1947 in sentinel monkeys in Uganda in the Zika forest, right? It's transmitted by the Aedes aegypti mosquitoes, but also other mosquitoes have been suggested to be involved in virus transmission, which is the same vector as dengue, chikungunya, and for example, yellow fever. Uh, it's a flavi virus, a single-stranded RNA genome around, with around uh, 100,000 base pairs. Uh, and there's two phylogenetic genotypes, the African genotype, uh, which has only caused around 16 naturally Curing cases up until 2007, and then the Asian genotype. <clears throat> so the Asian genotype has caused this massive epidemic in the Yap Islands, in Micronesia, and then it has spread subsequently through uh, Pacific Islands and some Southeast Asian countries. Uh, so we know that there's this strong, sorry, we know that there's this strong phylogenetic distinction between, between these two different lineages, and uh, perhaps not so unexpectedly, it was the Asian genotype that was introduced in the Americas, and the first detection of this virus and, confirm and confirmation happened in March 2015. Um, and a few months later, there was some increase in the microcephaly cases. They were noted in Bahia State. And in fact, um, we tried to... In 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 so what I'm showing here on the left side is a molecular clock tree. Uh, which builds upon the fact that the virus evolves really quickly, as most RNA viruses do. Uh, so what we do here is we take into account that mutations accumulate over time, over an uh, observable time scale. We collect samples over time. Um, and what this shows to us uh, is that these sequences, the basal sequences, come from French Polynesia, Cook Islands and Thailand, so Pacific Islands. And then there's one single introduction of the virus into the Americas. So using these molecular clock techniques, we were able to date this introduction of the virus in the Americas at least between, so between March and December, <coughs> sorry, 2013. So that's at least and at least 12 months, one year before its first detection. So that means the virus was circulating uh, without uh, uh, any reports confirmed, potentially due to uh, mis, um, misclassification with dengue, for example, and chikungunya, other two viruses that are cu currently circulating in Brazil. So we also saw looking at flight data from countries where um, Zika virus is endemic, uh, we also saw this increase, about 50% increase in the number of flights to Brazil, uh, which coincides with, coinciding with the date of introduction in the country. And this kind of suggests that large-scale mobility patterns drive the emergence of RNA viruses, particularly Zika in this case in Brazil. But we still have really to test this hypothesis. So uh, looking back retrospectively, in 2015, uh, we know that Zika incidence was highest in these areas. So that's Z uh, Brazil is divided into 27 federal states. And the highest number of cases uh, per uh, 100,000 uh, people was found in Salvador, uh, so in Bahia State, and uh, very, uh, very much in Salvador as well. Uh, obviously, this probably is uh, the, this represents uh, uh, underreporting. There's a lot of misclassification. That uh, there's a lot of dengue, for example, in chikungunya as well, in all these areas. Uh, but there's also 1,434 confirmed microcephaly cases in the country, and I think that's exactly what made Zika so important. Uh, most of these cases happened in the northeast of Brazil, as expected, uh, by, as expected if there is actually like a causation, like a causality between Zika virus infection and birth defects. And last year, at least, the epidemic peak was around in mid-July. Um, so the most updated picture, however, so for, from, from, from the 25th of May, um, the most updated picture from the Ministry of Health says that the virus has since then, Zika virus has since then uh, become very widespread throughout the entire country. 
Uh, so this is in red municipalities with Zika cases confirmed, uh, in yellow is municipalities with suspected Zika cases. So the virus which was first potentially introduced in one single location, perhaps even a few different locations, has now completely widespread throughout the entire country. And the, probably the number of infected people is more than a few million, million cases. So for example, for dengue, just until May 2016, there were already one million cases confirmed in Brazil. And this has been estimated to represent, uh, so only 1 to 12 and 17 cases are expected to be notified, dengue cases. So this is obviously an underrepresentation of the scenario for dengue. But Zika is also widespread as well, and chikungunya. Chikungunya, there's two different lineages circulating in the country, and they're really widespread as well, pretty much in all federal states. However, there's so little that we know in terms of the genomic of the virus. There's very few chikungunya, chikung chikungunya genomes. There's less than 10 complete chikungunya uh, genomes for Brazil. And Zika genomes, there's only around 24. Even though it represents such a big problem in Brazil, uh, there's very few data uh, currently available. For example, most of the data be before 2015 uh, came from uh, the Pacific Islands, uh, genomic data. And then we have a few sequences from Brazil and a few sequences from 2016 and 2015 from Brazil and some of, some of these sequences from other uh, South American countries. Um, so obviously, uh, this represents that a very tiny fraction of all these cases is actually sequenced. So there's an estimated number of less than 0.001% of these cases are sequenced. And in contrast, for example, the Ebola outbreak which was the best sampled outbreak ever, was between 5 to 15 percent of the cases uh, were fully sequenced. So um, while talking with Nick and with Josh and with uh, many other people, we came up with, uh, with, with, uh, with an idea, with a project, right? And um, we had some questions that we want to try to address, and there's still some unsolved questions. So when exactly and where and how did Zika, for example, became established in Brazil? and in the Americas. Uh, so what are the patterns, again, what drives the local spread, regional spread, and international spread? This could be very useful to do like spatial temporal predictions, for example. Um, what is the extent, the full extent of uh, virus genetic diversity circulating in the country? That could be very useful also for vaccine and diagnostic design. And um, more interestingly, perhaps, if there are any associations between changes in the virus itself and the likelihood of Zika uh, complications, for example, microcephaly or the Guillain-Barré syndrome. Um, more recently, there's been the suggestion that there might be a link between dengue pre-exposure uh, and Zika, and that might actually lead to disease severity, so we also <coughs> thought to include uh, potentially uh, dengue and chikungunya also in this analysis. So overall, uh, the plan was, and the plan is, because this project is starting on Monday, uh, this Monday, uh, so the idea is to cover this broad geographical uh, region, literally all the states in Brazil, uh, and we want to sequence historical samples, uh, patients with a, a wide range of clinical presentations, um, obviously human patients, but also we also want to do and to try to sequence the virus from the Aedes mosquito, which has not been uh, done until today. Um, and the overall idea right, is to establish the surveillance framework uh, to track this future spread of pathogens. This is not only applicable for Zika, this obviously will be applicable to other pathogens. And it would be very, very good as well for Brazil to have this technology uh, to, uh, to stay there for a while in order to improve as well surveillance, uh, surveillance efforts against these arboviruses. Um, also, uh, this is sort of a beacon for open science. Uh, all the data will be sort of released in real time. This is sort of a unique. I guess, at least in virus, uh, in virus evolution studies. All the data will be uh, openly available on Virological website as soon as, as, as it is generated. Um, all of this builds upon previous projects, and specifically this very successful project with Josh Quick and Nick Lohman uh, in the Ebola outbreak in Guinea. Um, and it's a mobile, we we're trying to do a mobile lab. And our goal there uh, here will be also to try to minimize this lag between the date of collection and the date of sequencing, right? And to make this data publicly available for anyone uh, to analyze. Um, and the overall plan, 
So this is a, uh, the overall plan. This is a map of mosquito suitability in the Americas. And uh, on top of that, we have uh, the map of Brazil. Uh, this is scaled by population density as well. So the trip is designed as a road trip or a sequencing road trip through the hint incidence hotspot. So we're tracking down uh, the virus and we're going. So Brazil is, as I mentioned, is divided in 27 states, right? Each of these states has its own sort of regional laboratory. And this is a work done in coordination uh, and um, in collaboration with the Brazilian Ministry of Health. So we have access to the data from all these national laboratories, right? So we will start in one of them in Instituto de Chagas in Belém. That's going to be day one. That's going to be next week. Uh, and we have a minibus where 12 people will be in and we have a, a trailer. Um, uh, and uh, the idea is to go all the way up to uh, Bahia. So, uh, so that's about 2,000 kilometers that we're planning to do in around three weeks, uh, more or less, two to three weeks' time. Um, <clears throat> so this, this is going to be our mobile lab. Uh, but in the other, on the other hand, uh, we will have a fixed lab. The fixed lab will be in Sao Paulo, and that's already settled. Uh, so we have a fixed lab in Sao Paulo, and that fixed lab is actually receiving samples from all the other states that we are not covering in this trip. Um, the idea also is that uh, Fiocruz uh, in, in Bahia and Instituto de Vanchagas will then become fixed labs after this trip is finished and there will be a training workshop next week and there will be another training workshop in Natal as well where all the teams will meet uh, in order to, um, uh, to continue the collaboration. Uh, so uh, we want to, we are very ambitious here, so we want to try to do 750 uh, full genomes of Zika virus. We'll focus by looking at Zika positive samples, um, uh, dengue positive samples, but also, and also chikungunya. And we're bringing it as well with us a team of three entomologists from Instituto in Buenos Aires uh, to collect mosquito populations. So a lot of materials, well, every, all materials already arrived to Brazil, and that was uh, uh, yesterday, I think. So we have four Oxford nanopores and 96 Oxford nanopore flow cells. Uh, but uh, technical details, uh, Nick and Josh will be there to answer all your technical questions about this. Um, <clears throat> so this is just uh, an analysis. So Josh went uh, to Sao Paulo and, uh, uh, to, to test the method. And uh, so one of these samples was sequenced. There was a sample, uh, sample from Ribeirão Preto, collected in uh, 19 of April. It's more or less here, Ribeirão Preto. And uh, using a multiplex PCR and mini iron, uh, we were able to have this sequence and perform sort of a dated phylogenetic analysis. Um, so this includes all the sequences available from the Americas up until yesterday, uh, really. Um, so, and uh, this sequence, which is the new sequence, seems to be sort of like the ancestor of this clade C, which was described in a paper um, uh, with uh, Charles Chu that presented a bit earlier today. And uh, it seems that uh, it's increasing as well the, uh, our knowledge about the diversity of this particular clade uh, circulating, not only in Sao Paulo, but also in Bahia. So these all viruses come from Bahia state. Um, oh, so there's also the website. So this is the logo uh, of our uh, Zebra uh, uh, Zika in Brazil real-time analysis. Uh, the website is going to be launched today, or is it, is it on already? Yeah, it's on. Okay, so we have a website working now. Um, all the sequences will be deposited here, uh, and uh, there will be like sort of updated trees as well uh, in this website. Uh, we would like to thank obviously everyone from Oxford Nanopore who made this possible. Uh, Nick Lohman is the PI of this project, Josh, uh, and then uh, University of Oxford, Oliver Fibers and Paul, Paul Klenerman, uh, but also Andrew Rumbo from Edinburgh, uh, Miles Carroll, Eddie Holmes, uh, Matt Luz, and then the Brazilian team, which is uh, composed by, with Marcy Nunes, is the co-PI from Brazil, in Ivandro Chagas, his team there, uh, Luis Alcantara is the PI in Bahia, and Esther Sabino in the fixed lab in Sao Paulo. Uh, and that's, the, uh, uh, that's the, the, the picture taken yesterday when uh, the Oxford Nanopore reagents arrived in Sao Paulo. Thank you. Thank you. Raymond and Joseph are just going to join us on stage for a quick Q&A. So if you'd like to ask about the Zebra project or indeed the previous Ebola project.
project out in Guinea. Um, please go ahead. Who is our, where is our first question going to come from? Got one here at the back. Um, oh, just one second, sorry. Right, we've got our first question. Yeah, Hi. With, uh, with improvements in technologies such as the MinEye allowing you to get this real-time data, how do, you, um, how do you think you can use that data, kind of, um, and particularly the governments, to help respond to these outbreaks? Okay. Hi, everybody. Please, can you say a question again? Yeah, with, with this real-time analysis, uh, how will you use the data to respond to the outbreaks? Okay, the data was used to make the tracing, like uh, when they were having some cases in some areas, how to know whether this, uh, where, where, where this strength were from. You know, we're between three countries, Guinea, Liberia, and Sierra Leone. At the beginning of the outbreak, it was difficult to locate the cases. Gekedu, Masanta, that's why we suffered a lot. But when we started with the mini iron at the Koya, it was now easy to locate the cases, and then the response was so quick. OK. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> So I just want to add, uh, like he says, uh, the result after sequencing help also the epidemiologist team who were working with WHO. Because uh, during the outbreak of Ebola in our country at the previous time, it was not easy there was a lot of complaint between Liberia, Sierra Leone, and Guinea to know the length between the cases. So using sequencing in our country, it was the good opportunity for us. Josh, did you want to add anything? Any more questions? One down here, Hi, for David. Are you thinking of uh, sequencing any reservoir organisms? Um, I think that was one for the Ebola virus, and whether or not you know if there's any for the Zika virus. The res for Zika virus, the reservoir for Zika virus would be the, you mean within a host reservoir? So are you talking about like semen, for example, saliva, and things like that? Yeah, so uh, the... Uh, another organism other than human and mosquito uh, primates, for example, yeah. non-human primates. Um, no, not in this project. I don't think so. Okay. Um, plus, we don't have permission, I guess, for that. I mean, you need probably some permission to do that. Mm -hmm. But there is some suggestion. Again, there's a paper in BioArchive uh, that the virus was already found in non-human primates in Brazil. And if that's true, that kind of represents um, a risk for the, you know, of, like yellow fever is a bit similar. So the virus uh, has been introduced 500 years ago in the Americas and is now present in the forest, right, in non-human primate species and in this exotic cycle in the jungle. So then you have localized outbreaks here and there only in the Americas. Um, for Zika virus, this represents one single introduction from elsewhere, but if the virus does become established there in non-human primate populations, uh, you might have chances of having more frequent outbreaks in the future as well. But no, not, not, the, not yet, at least, not yet. Yeah. I think we've probably got time for one more question. Okay. Hi, uh, maybe this one's for, for Josh. Um, how big is uh, the Zika genome? I, I missed it probably. And, and are you using a similar tiling RT-PCR approach that you did for, 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 for uh, Ebola? So yeah, the Zika genome is 10.7 kb. Um, and we're trying to develop a multiplex PCR to make the lab work less onerous. Uh, we want to expand the number of genomes sequenced by an, an order of magnitude. So we want to try and sequence between 500 and 1,000 Zika genomes this time, which um, should be possible with the reagents that we've got in Sao Paulo at the moment. But we need to be able to generate uh, significantly, uh, we need to basically increase the throughput of the PCR stage. So we've developed a, a multiplex PCR, which is in two tubes. So you just do uh, two tubes per sample, and then that makes the quantification pooling um, native barcoding sequencing process much quicker. 
Thanks very much. I'm sorry to cut you short. We do have coffee. Um, Raymond and Joseph are going to Heathrow after lunch, so do catch them um, soon if you want to speak to them. Um, thank you very much. Thank you.